Hello everyone. Welcome back in today's tutorial. In today's tutorial, we are going to see one of the interesting functionality related to the Oracle database. And that is nothing but SQL loader for loading data. So let's start today's session. Why we need the SQL loader? Now consider the real time scenario where um, your application development as well as the the source from where you are getting the the data for example the ETL source or the, the ETL team which is also working at the same time during the time where your project is also working parallelly. Now assume that the data is not ready means the ETL work is not yet done and you still want the data to be available in your system. So there is no transformation available to load the data in your system for your usage. So how can we get the data or how can we load the data? That is the one thing. The next thing is if you use the SQL loader. So actually for this situation where the you have the dependency on other system to get the data and that their development work is not done and you still need the data in that situation you can utilize the SQL loader. It's a utility to load the data into the database. What it, what it is required? It just requires a flat file. So flat file can be created from any of the database. For example, if you have a, a Terra data or if you have a mainframe DB2 system, from there you can just export the data into the flat file and use that flat file to import the data in your Oracle database. Writing a code for the SQL loader is like just a couple of hours task. It's not a big headache or it's not a big task to do. It's very simple to do and the results are very quick. You can do the data load very quickly compared to other regular uh, uh, data loading programs. So that is the reason to avoid the dependence on the other, uh, other team and to load the data very quickly we have to use the SQL loader. What is the SQL loader then? The SQL loader utility it is actually SQL loader is a utility which is used to load the data from other sources into Oracle. The SQL loader will only read the data from the flat file. This is the one of the restriction means for the SQL loader to load the data it should have we should have the flat file. It cannot connect to other database to fetch the data and the load into the Oracle database. So it should be in the flat file like txt file, csv file, xls file, etc. We have to use delimited file format or fixed length format files. So these are the uh, files are processed through the SQL loader. The doc files or any other different type of data format will not be supported. So these are the details about the SQL loaders. Now what are the steps we have to use for loading the data through the SQL loader? First very thing, uh, first prerequisite or the important thing we should have the data in the flat file format. You can use any third party database and uh, use their appropriate utility tool to convert their data into the flat file system like txt or excel etc or csv also then once you have the file you have to create your table structure in your database that means we will create one table in our oracle database third thing required is we have to create a control file we will shortly see what is the format of control file and how to write it it is a very simple file to write and um, once you understand it's not that difficult to write. In the control file we need to provide couple of commands as well as we have to also provide the table name, column names etc. So what are the table we create in the step 2 we have to make a note of the table name and also the columns as well. It's a good to have the information about the data types. Then we have to use one SQL loader command. SQL loader it is a executable SQL LDR command which that executable will be available whenever you install the Oracle client in your system or whenever you configure the Oracle client in your server side. 
so you can use on the unix server or you can use in the windows both are works both works fine so we have to there is a execute command we'll see that shortly we have to fire that execute command to load the data into the database control file so let me show you one sample control file here so this is a sample control file it is very simple text file so few just lines so very first line is load data then we have the inline then bad file uh, then discard file insert into table and the name of table then the fields terminated by clause then optionally enclosed by trailing null columns and some column names and their format so this is a very simple file uh, for the con uh, simple control file and we'll see the details about the each line the load data statement which is very first statement in the control file is a required at the beginning of control file it is very it is required mandatory and it should be at the beginning of the control file the next command that is in file that is in file is the um, option where we are specifying what is the input file name or the input file location in linux or unix you will for, see you will have the format like this but in windows you'll s provide the uh, the the location like the c drive d drive where you have the input file we have to specify bad file bad file uh, we can uh, specify or we can just ignore it it is optional attribute if you if we specify this bad file then the bad records found during the loading will be stored in this file so it is always good option to keep this uh, file because whenever the records are not appropriate those will be inserted into the bad file so that we can revisit those record and correct those the next is discard file it is also optional file but whenever we specify in the control file then records which do not meet a when condition that will be written to this file so suppose if you write a when condition and that condition is not made then the records will be pushed into this discard file then uh, there are a couple of things like if you see the terminated by is a comma so it's a separator uh, okay before that there is a statement called as a insert into we will see that shortly so there are two types of uh, option whether insert or we are going to append the record into the la uh, into the table so there are other options also we have the insert option we have append we have the replace we have truncate insert option it loads the row rows into the database only if the target data uh, target target table is empty if the records are present already in that table you will not able to insert you will not able to execute the insert command append it loads the rows if the target table is empty or not empty so append is a good option if you already have the data it will just reinsert uh, it will just append the record to the existing records so there, for example in the first load you have the 10 records it will insert that in the next load if you have the 20 record it will insert first it will have the first 10 as well as it will insert the next 20 so total will be 30 record in that table then the replace uh, it will first delete uh, all the rows in the existing table and then loads the new rec rows the truncate it will first truncate the table and then load the rows so you may know the what is difference between truncate and delete and which one to prefer so of course the truncate is all, always preferable which have the better performance over delete so these are the details about the um, control file along with that there are some options like the separator so in your input file how the records are separated are they separated by comma colon or the pipe symbol you can specify that field terminated by optionally enclosed by that means suppose uh yeah you have uh suppose if you use the comma as a separator and in one of the field like suppose company description field it that field itself can contain a comma so how to handle that to specify that column to be a very uh 
that can that column column can contain a, co a, a comma then you can specify the value of the uh, company description in double quote so that is the it's, it's called as a optionally enclosed to avoid um, multiple breakage or the multiple columns to create the multiple columns so we can enclose that value with a double quote so you can specify this character also different if you don't want to use double quote you can use any other characters also and it has the one more called trailing null columns so the it trails the null columns the ending column and then we have to specify the different column which uh, you have in your table so for example employee name employee number name salary then the da date so whenever you have the date format uh, date kind of uh, input you have to specify what format of data as a coming in the input whether it's a uh, mmdd yy or it's a yy dd mm so, so what are the format you are getting in the input you have to specify that format here so these are the details about the control file so for the today's demo i have created a different uh, control file but let me show you first the table structure what I have in the database in the database we have the table called as a cl test it has column source row id last update date first name last name employee id status and email if you see it's a data type you can see the source row id is number last update date is timestamp first name is varcar last name is varcar and the other em employee id status email all are varcar so these are the details of the table let's go and see the control file so control file is first command is load data that is mandatory in file is the input file it is referring for from this location then we have the into clause so by default it will use the insert if you do not specify in in load data into table and the name of table is cl test fields terminated by comma optionally enclosed by double quotes so the next clause that about the null columns it's not mandatory so i just ignore that then we have to specify the column names what are present in the database so first is source row id last update date then we have the first name last name employee ID, status and e email so what are the sequence you are giving here make sure you should have the same sequence in the the file which is prepared in your uh, input file uh, you have to follow the same sequence in the input file if your input file sequence is different then you have to make sure you are uh, have the same sequence in this control file so that is mandatory the sequence in the control file and the input file must be same suppose if you don't want to load the source la uh, source row idea then just remove this field but make sure this field also not coming in the so in the source input file but i will add that for now you can see the f as the last update date is the date format i have just mentioned is the date format is coming as the ddmmyy once you created this we will prepare the data data file is looks like this i have created a text file which has the values such as one the date that is last update date first name last name employee id status and email address if you notice i have not mentioned the column names in the text file so it is not required to mention it will just load the all the rows so if you mention the column names column names will be inserted into the table so make sure you you are not using the column names in the text file once you are done with that you can go to the command prompt and uh, command prompt nothing but if you are going to the windows you have to just uh, go to the uh, cmd command prompt i'll do csk clear uh, now first thing you have to check is whether sql loader working or not how can you check you have to type sql ldr 
if you see this kind of information this is like the uh, extra information about this SQL LDR command and what are the options available so if you see this that means SQL loader is correctly configured if it is not configured then you can uh, you have to specify the Oracle home and this SQL loader path there once it is done means once you confirm that SQL loader is loading uh, we can easily um, use that then you have to use a command called as a SQL LDR then you have to use the username password and seed or service of the database so here in the single code you have to provide so username is same XORS password is same XORS at ORCL ORCL is a seed so this is this detail is required means these are the database details then you have to use the keyword control equal to and you have to specify what is the location of control file then you have to specify the log uh, log file name also so I have prepared the same query let me show you you can write a SQL uh, statement also and execute this echo op and pause something like that but uh, I'll just copy this but before that there is one more thing we'll confirm we'll see so this is my location where I have the data file I have the SQL file I have the control file SQL file is not man it's not mandatory it's optional the data file is required and control file is required this is csv file i created for the testing but uh, for our demo we will use the text file so th we have the two mandatory file control file and the data file once we are done we will go and check in the database what are the records currently if you see in the database there is no record available i will just paste it here now if you notice the command is very simple SQL, lo SQL LDR username password and said then you have to provide the control file and if any what are the processes going on during this process if any error comes or, or what are the success steps if you want to track then you can specify the log file name you can create at any location there is no restriction and how many rows you want to process suppose you want to process two if you want to process thousand 1 million you have to specify that the rows and just enter so if you can see that within quick within second that record got loaded you can see the message commit point reach logical record count is 10 so that means 10 records are loaded into database now how can we check you can go to the database and you can find the query or you can just refresh here and you can see the records are loaded correctly and these 10 records are present in the data file so you can see the data file here so there are 10 records and completely loaded without any error so by this way you can load the data into the database this is very quick and very simple uh, easy way to load the data into the database I hope this tutorial is going to help you to load the data in the database Oracle database very quickly and efficient way if you have any questions or queries, do not forget to mention in the comment section of this video. Thank you and have a nice time.